seems viruses are in the news a lot lately. And in fact, if you look, I'm wearing boot slips and everyone else has got these little booties on. I kept them in this area. It's a quarantine area. Look at that. That is awesome. I, I do love Australian short necks. The ground really well at Hey, what's going on everybody? Cannon here and I'm still in Australia. Thankfully, loving it. We got a beautiful day today. Hanging out with Adam Skidmore of the Taronga Zoo and my new friend Colin South, who is one of the chair people of the Hawkesbury uh, Reptile Society, Reptilogical Society. They've invited me down here, but more importantly, they're really showing me uh, some of the conservation efforts for some of their Chelonian species. So here we have the Beringer River Turtle. Uh, this is an amazing story. There was a lot of drama happening with this particular species. Can you tell us what was going on with this animal? Yeah, in 2015, a, a new virus went upstream and pretty much wiped out the whole entire population of these turtles. Um, we had some kayakers kayak up and down the river and they noticed all these turtles dying along the riverbed and they raised authorities and pushed really hard. And you know, within a matter of a month, we had set up a, you know, a captive recovery program for these turtles, which is pretty unheard of. I was going to say a that. month. Yeah, it was, it was so fast. Like wow. for us to see that happen within a month, um, maybe six weeks for it to just full on action is, is, is really hard to see that happen. And, and they did it with this species, which is amazing. And I think, because of that swift action and the push from the community and it saved these turtles. Okay, so here we are just a few short years later yep. and you're holding in your hand an animal that was, they, you had to go out, They, by the way, they went out and they grabbed some adults that tested negative for the virus. They kept them in this area, it's a quarantine area. It was a pretty strict quarantine, the yep. best they could do. Um, and in fact, if you look, I'm wearing uh, boot slips and everyone else has got these little booties on because we had to step through a uh, chemical solution that kills viruses and so on and so forth. Seems viruses are in the news a lot lately, uh, but anyhow, um, you know, we take all precautions. Adam's going to be the only one handling them. You can see he's handling these animals with a, a pair of latex gloves. So here's the deal. Uh, got foundation stock, okay, and now you're holding an animal that is captive bred. Yeah, this is one from our first breeding from 2016-17. Okay. Uh, and we've been successful now. We're up to our fourth season of, of reproducing, which is very cool. pretty cool. Yeah, definitely, yeah. because um, how many animals do they reckon they lost? There's lots of different reports of, you know, I think about we we had at least close to maybe, you know, several hundred come to the zoo to be looked at, but there's talks of like thousands. Thousands. So this is truly an endangered animal here in, in the continent of Australia. Yeah, they're classified as critically endangered. Now. Okay. Well, so this is, guys, I know you love turtles and reptiles. Um, we on this channel, we really love to highlight the people that are doing real conservation work and get you behind the scenes because so many of you have a passion for this and maybe want to get involved in this type of work and zookeeping is definitely the front lines in many cases for saving uh, species on our planet. So we're looking at some, the first generation of animals to come out of the Taranga Zoo. What's the goal, obviously? The goal is just to keep breeding and slowly just repopulate the river and also monitor the ones in the river till they start breeding. So the idea is they take quite a long time before they start breeding. We're probably looking at mature females, probably close to 12 years old. Okay. Um, and We've got some young girls that have just started breeding this last season, last two seasons, and you know, they're just coming to that size and that size of breeding, and we guesstimate them around 12 to 14 years of age. Okay, so very cool. So it takes a while, like yeah. most other Chelonians, definitely. So, yeah. the big problem was in the river, it killed off most of the, the adults. adults. So they only found about three adults mm. after the event. Really? And there were some young ones that survived the, the uh, virus. We we're still finding babies, hatchlings, uh, a month after the virus had gone through the area, so it, did, did, it wiped out the breeding stock. Did you guys ever find out what caused the virus or have any uh, no. hypotheses? There's lots of theories, lots of thoughts, lots of rumours, but none of them are solid where this virus stemmed from. It's novel, it's a brand new virus. Yeah, they call Scary. it a novel virus to start off with. It's got a name, but I'm yeah. coming. Gotcha. Yeah, it's Bellinger River turtle virus. Okay. It has a proper name, but at the end of the day, yeah. We know. We just everyone refers to it as BRT, Bellinger River or BRV, Bellinger gotcha. River virus. Yeah, it's one of those nasty viruses. Oh, uh, okay. We're that really effect. fortunate here that we have a really good team. So I'm sort of the husbandry and I do the animal side where we have the um, Australian Registry of Wildlife Health here, which are our pathologists and they're the crack team that go out and deal with all diseases all around New South Wales and Australia. And they're sort of like the experts in, in wildlife disease. Cool. And they're part of our team. So they're the ones that investigate and work with Department of Primary Industries to, to nut out this disease. Um, so it's really, we're really fortunate that 
when we talk about the disease, I let them discuss it because they can talk about it. Yeah. They know what they're talking Your about. Your job is to keep the animals happy and alive. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Is. And so uh, we were talking before we clicked the camera on, uh, each of these tubs is filtered water, but yep. you do it by twos. Yep. So basically that enables you to work on two tubs yep. before you have to change gloves and move over to yep. the other animals. Exactly. Uh, let me ask you, can we see some of the adults? Yeah, let's, can, let's can, do you actually still have any adults that yeah, were we, taken from the river? Yeah, we do. We still have 16 animals. Okay. Uh, these are probably the last 16 adults. I've been in the river quite a few times since, and there's nothing this size in the river. Really? Um, there's wow. animals that are coming up to size. We guesstimate the wild population up around you know, looking at stats that we're doing close to 200 of that, um, there's not a lot out there. Okay. Um, what do you think they were before the virus hit the river? I reckon there's like, they estimate them up to a thousand. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's so a big a hit. Lot. It's a big They're hit. They're very secretive turtles. Uh, we're also, any of you guys that know, let's go see these guys. Any of you guys that um, know, when you're dealing with reptiles, um, you know, turtles are basically, uh, you know, they'll lay, uh, especially freshwater turtles, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure on how many eggs these animals lay, but the goal between, is... Between 10 and 15. Oh, so it's fairly good size for um, clutch yeah. for a freshwater clutch turtle. Had, Adam? 17. 17. Okay, yeah, so it's I fantastic. 17 last year out of one um and then we hatched 13 out of that 17. that's pretty good um, yeah that's not bad so i find that i found that if the eggs are fertile or go through we end up with, with these guys close to like an around an 80 to 85 percent hatch rate Very if cool. they're fertile um and some of the clutches are big i find average if we go on average is around 12. gotcha um, okay yeah, very interesting. Guys, you'll notice very simple design. Okay, round tubs, depth of water is looking, if we're here in the States, uh, not here in the States, but in the States, I'd say that's about three and a half foot of water there, right around that, close to four foot. It's very simple egg laying design. You guys have seen a lot of this stuff in, in uh, so many collections. There's one under there. They got hiding areas for them. They were easy ramps for them to get up. So it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool, simple design that is meeting all the needs for the animal. Um, and then once these animals go back, the good thing about turtles is uh, they just, they don't, it's not like a uh, wolf pup or something that's been brought out of the wild. These animals, as soon as they go back into a natural river system, are going to be able to turn right back into turtles and they'll start hiding and basking and foraging for food and so on. Hey, that, that, do these guys, are these guys omnivores or are they strict carnivores? Uh, I think they're more omnivores than carnivores. Okay. They, they'll eat anything. Gotcha. Look at that. That is awesome, man. I, I do love <clears throat> Australian short necks. They've got such a cool design to the shell. You can tell they're really great swimmers. And certainly when you look at those big paddle feet, that really nice, that really nice uh, design of the shell, that's a riverine turtle. That's an animal that's got to fight a current. Oh yeah. And wow. these guys are found like they, they, they're not as fast as a lot of other freshwater turtles actually. They're quite- They, they okay. walk along the bottom. They, oh. you, they, you, don't normally find them swim in mid water, okay. mainly on the bottom. On the bottom, so that's interesting. And you know, one of the things that you would look then if they're a bottom dweller, like our, our snapping turtles, they have those tubercles uh, under their chin. And we believe that that is an extra sensory organ to help them find things maybe in the mud or in the dirty water. So that's really, that makes sense, Carl. Yeah, yeah. now that you're schooling me and let me and, know what these guys' biology is like. they're also cloaca breathers too. So they are, yeah. very cool. So they breathe through their bottoms. Yeah. We've got a few strain turtles that do that, which is quite a unique feature. And where these guys are found, um, they're sort of found in deeper pools just after the rapids or the, you know, the riffle zones where right. it's highly oxygenated. So you tend to pick them up more there and. These big girls tend to sit quite deep um, in the in the water column, but I find that they're they're an unusual turtle. So when you when you're diving for them, especially the smaller ones, they don't tend to run. So when you swim over them, they don't tend to just take off in front of you. They tend to sit and wait, huh. and they watch you, and they watch you, and they they watch. And as you go over, they're like, okay, you've gone, and then they get up and go the other way. Gotcha. Um, and then when we're diving for them, we tend to have like quite a few people just diving over the top of each other or around each other, just to ensure that um, we pick them up as they sort of scoot off behind you. Gotcha. Um, so they rely more on yeah. camouflage at first. Yeah, they sit and wait. Yeah. They're a waiting turtle. Um, they're, they're really unusual. Um, yeah, definitely for an Australian species, right? Yeah, they share the river with Emigura Macquarie Eye, um, the Macquarie short neck turtle, which when they see you, they just swim yeah. and just take off. And, gotcha. Um, and, and our goal is when we're in the river looking for them, we just catch whatever swims. Cool. So we want to keep numbers of population numbers on all of them. Very good. So the goal is to get these animals stable in captivity and then to get Green. them back out into yeah. the wild. So yeah. that is what zoos do. 
uh, for wild populations. So important to visit your zoos. If you're in Sydney, Australia, definitely come on out and see the Taronga Zoo. Uh, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, Taronga Zoo. Taronga Zoo, very good. You know, I got to learn the local lingo, mate. Uh, but anyhow, uh, really fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing me here. The thing, oh, sorry. No worries. What, what's probably what's important about this is this is like a, a zoo working with our, our government body. So this is funded by our state government. Okay. Um, on a Save Our Species program. And that's the, the program that's invested a lot of money into native wildlife. And this is just one of the programs that we're working on, which so far seems to be doing really well. We, we couldn't have asked for better results so far. Good deal. Um, yeah, it's great. All right, well, there you go, everybody. I just wanted to say uh, thanks to Adam and Colin who had to jump on a phone call. Uh, you guys rule, do me a favor. Come to Sydney, visit Australia, and uh, visit Adam. Tell him you saw him on Camp Kennan, all right? And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon on another episode. I'll leave you with a good shot of this beauty right here.